everyone. It's time for us to get started. I know there's lots of uh, conversation and stories, and uh, everybody's got lots of things to, uh, to hear and to share. Uh, it's been quite a week, and uh, the name Fiona will not be forgotten soon. <laughs> uh, I hope there's nobody here that uh, has that name, but uh, if you are, you're probably thinking about changing it. Anyway, we're so glad that you are able to make it today. Those that are here in person and those that are watching online, we're, we're glad that you're able to join us as well. And uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity just to come down from the, from the uh, activities of the week. I know many of us, uh, many of us are, are stiff and sore from uh, lugging wood and, and manning chainsaws and climbing up on roofs and, and all kinds of things like that. And uh, we're weary. And uh, we've come to a place uh, where we can just sit and, and relax and bask in the presence of God and uh, be a little bit restored uh, here today. So that's my prayer is that God will, will help us as we uh, restore our, our souls and our hearts and uh, along with our properties, of course. But uh, this is an opportunity for us just to, uh, just to sit back and, uh, and receive what God has for us today. So I welcome you. If you are online, uh, be sure to enter into the comments there and, uh, and let us know who you are and where you are and how you're doing and any prayer requests we'll, uh, we'll follow up on as well. And uh, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's just settle our hearts and, and come together as we, as we worship the Lord. We're going to start with a, a very appropriate uh, old hymn of the church, Shelter in the Time of Storm. So let's, uh, if you're able, stand together and we'll sing. The Lord's our rock in Him we hide A shelter in the time of storm Secure whatever ill be tied A shelter in the time of storm Oh Jesus is a rock is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Thank you. Be seated. That is an appropriate hymn. It's a, we are living in a weary land, are we not? A weary land right now. Our region has been 
has become very weary and our hearts and our bodies have become weary as well. Uh, just a moment for the announcements. Um, they're in the bulletin. If you're here, if you're not, uh, you can go online and, uh, and check them out there at uh, uh, mychurchfamily.ca. Everything is there on the, uh, on the website, mychurchfamily.ca. But uh, let, remind, let me remind you of a few things. Um, uh, there's coffee and tea and fellowship following the uh, celebration this morning, and, and of course we'll be able to continue to share our stories and, our, and the times of our lives as we gather together for that. Um, tonight, we are having a, um, a, a special celebration of prayer, and uh, we had scheduled this for uh, uh, last Sunday, but uh, it didn't work, of course, um, so we just bumped it up to this Sunday. Um, this is a very important time, and I know we're not always used to coming out on a Sunday night. Uh, there's not going to be any uh, amount of preaching or teaching. It uh, might be a little short devotional uh, music. We might have a little bit, but not much. This is a time for us to pray. And, uh, and so we'll walk through that together. Nobody will be uh, singled out or embarrassed or, or pointed out in any way. But we'll gather together as a, as a group of people, and, uh, and we'll pray. And uh, the Lord knows, and you and I know, that we need prayer. Uh, we need it on so many levels. We need it as a congregation. Uh, we need it as a community. Pray for uh, for so many situations and circumstances around us. For those that have been um, struggling and are still struggling with uh, uh, Fiona and uh, the aftermath of the hurricane that we've experienced uh, last week, and uh, and just the, uh, the, the the issues that are around us. There's so many, and so we'll look at some of those and we'll uh, uh, with some some sense of uh, of order. We'll uh, we'll we'll walk through that uh, time of prayer together, and uh, I really encourage you to come. And, uh, and be uplifted and encouraged. Will there be a time also uh, for individual prayer if you have a need, uh, a health concern or something like that and you'd like to be anointed with oil, we'll be doing that as well. So uh, feel free to come and it's not exclusive. Anybody is welcome. If you have a, a friend or a relative or an enemy or somebody you'd like to bring uh, that needs prayer, um, you just go ahead and bring that person and, and we'll be happy to receive anybody and everybody. So that's tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, a couple other things coming up this week. Um, um, the, the men, are they meeting on uh, Tuesday uh, in light of uh, what's going on? Um, we had an event a week off because Libby got hit. Yep, absolutely. But we're up and running this week? Uh, yeah. Up and running this week. Tuesday morning uh, at, uh, at uh, eight, 8 o'clock. Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock at Smitty's, right. And uh, we'll be back to Bible study this week on Wednesday night. Uh, looking at the book of Romans, and that's at 6.30 on Wednesday night. All are welcome for that. And uh, uh, there's a note here in your bulletin about the uh, uh, Billy Graham event on October the 18th. That's in a, it's called an evangelism summit. And uh, there'll be people from all over the region gathering together um, to meet at that time. And I know there's lots going from Prince Edward Island to Halifax for that day. It's a day event. If anybody is interested in going, let me know, and we'll see if we can coordinate a, a carload or two that might like to go to that event. Uh, if you need more information, we have uh, some pamphlets or some um, printout uh, information. You can read up on it, but keep that in mind for October the 18th. Uh, if this is looking a long way ahead, but October 28th, there's going to be a crokinole night. Uh, so uh, the information on the bulletin, we'll be talking more about that as... Uh, as the weeks go by. Um, let, let me just uh, say, it's not really an announcement, but let me, well, I guess it is a sort. Let me just say that um, um, my, uh, my time here uh, as interim pastor was supposed to be over today. You're supposed to give me a party and say goodbye to me today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the board in their wisdom, or the council in their wisdom, has decided to uh, ask me to stay on a little longer. And, uh, and Charlene and I are happy to do that. So we're here for a while yet. And uh, just so that you're up to date on that, if you're not on the council or if you're wondering uh, why I'm still here after today, uh, that's why. Um, now, having said that, uh, we are going to be away on a couple of weeks vacation uh, starting this week, so, uh, so you won't see us around for a couple of weeks. Um, but we'll be back and, uh, and look forward to coming back as well. All right.
think that's it for the announcements. Um, just want to remind you about the offering. There's uh, several ways to give. Uh, there's the, uh, the e-transfer, which is probably the best way um, if, you, if you're good with the computer and can do it. Um, so the, the address is there for you, CBC, cbcgivings.com, I think it is. Um, and, uh, and also you can, of course, mail your gift in or bring it in and put it in the plate at the back of the church, uh, whatever works for you. There's lots of ways to, uh, to give through the website as well. All right. I think that's uh, all that we need to say at this point in time. Um, so let's, uh, uh, if you're able, stand again and we'll, uh, we'll worship. Uh, Faith has a couple of more uh, songs for us to, uh, to sing together. Uh, starting with Trust and Obey. So let's stand and sing. Where he sends, we will call. 
We come together today, and uh, as we said or sang earlier, we are weary. It's uh, it's been quite a week, and history has been made on so many different levels, and there's been so much damage and uh, and so much um, uh, inconvenience and, and trouble and, and difficulty for for everyone uh, on Prince Edward Island and uh, and really across the Atlantic region. Um, very very few have uh, have got through this without being touched or. In some way, and so, uh, Father, we we thank you that that your protection has been upon us. And, and before this all started, um, uh, we we prayed together as a church that uh, that you would protect us, and uh, and you've done that. Uh, I'm still unaware of anybody that's died because of the storm. There may be someone, but I'm not aware of any. And we thank you for that protection. Well, there's been all kinds of property damage homes and barns and businesses and uh, certainly trees, all kinds of property damage, we give you thanks that you have spared us and that you have protected us and that you have watched over us. During that hurricane, probably most of us were awake most of that night, listening to the howling winds and the, and the beating rain and, and feeling surreal about the circumstance and the situation, just not something we're used to here in this part of the world, and uh, and it was a little scary and a little unnerving, and still is for some people when they when they look around about. But we give you thanks, God, that we uh, have been protected by you, that we've been in the in the palm of your hand, that you've cared for us and you've brought us through, and uh, you've watched over us, and you've kept us from from uh, personal and physical harm. And so, Father, we. Uh, we just pray this morning for, for those that are continuing to struggle, for those uh, that we know of here and others that are perhaps online that are still without power, uh, maybe watching by a generator here this morning, we don't know, but, uh, but Father, we, we pray for those that are struggling without power, and we pray that you would help them as they uh, try to, uh, to stay warm and, and find some hot food and, uh, and get some running water and all those basic necessities that we take for granted so often. We pray, Father, that your protection would uh, would be with us as, as we move forward in these days. We pray for protection over the crews that are working for the hydro people, the power people, and uh, the arborists, and, and all those that are out there working so diligently pretty much around the clock to try and restore um, utilities and, and so on to, uh, to every home uh, on Prince Edward Island. So we pray for protection. It's, it's uh, dangerous work, uh, working with those live wires and, uh, and, uh, and with, with wires that are unknown whether they're live or not, and, and, uh, and, and all the generators that people have running and, and the back feed and, and so on. There, there's just so many uh, danger points along the way. We pray, Father, that you would just help these, uh, these folk to, to be alert and, and to, uh, to do their jobs well and to be safe. Uh, for 
those that are using chainsaws that aren't used to using chainsaws and uh, for those that are climbing on roofs that aren't used to climbing on roofs and, and for those that are um, working beyond their, their, their limits and their capacity, we pray for protection and we pray for alertness and we pray that you would continue to, uh, to help us as we go. Father, we thank you this morning for the way that community has come together. Uh, we've heard many stories of, of people that have uh, just reached out and, and helped others. Uh, uh, I know I'm personally grateful, uh, along with my wife, because we had a crew of six, six people show up at our house yesterday and, and help uh, clear uh, some of the trees out of our way so the power trucks can get in and, and so on, and, and uh, many other stories. I, I know even just on, on the way here this morning, we passed a, a, a homemade sign on the side of the road that said, fresh water, and somebody had their hose hanging out on the, on the highway for people to stop and, and get running water. And just so many stories after stories after stories where we recognize how, how you have um, equipped people uh, to do good things, to do good works, to, to reach out to others around them and to help those who are, who are struggling and less fortunate. And, um, and so we thank you, Father. We thank you for organizations like uh, like Harvest House, which I'm involved with, and there's many others that that uh, got their power on early in the week and were able to start serving hot meals and, and reaching out to people that, that are struggling. There's just so many good stories that come out of these kinds of disasters. And uh, we thank you, God, that you're in all of that, that you're moti motivating people to reach out uh, to uh, brothers and sisters all around and to help one another. So, Father, we pray that you would continue to help us as we as we um, work through the uh, the next week and, and whatever that looks like for us as more power is restored and, and more lives get back to normal. We pray, Father, that you would meet us with all of the needs that, that we have. For some, it would be financial needs, and for others, it's, uh, it's uh, relationships, and, uh, and, and others, it's perhaps addictions. There's, there's all kinds of needs that come out when disaster strikes, but Father, we pray that you would help us to turn to you, help us to look to you, help us to lean upon you and to recognize that you are our God. You have created us. You love us more than anyone else does. You have the best in mind for us. Sometimes we lose sight of that when we walk through a week like we've walked through, and, and we may ask questions like, God, why, why did you do this? Why did you let this happen? Father, we're reminded that you are the giver of good things only. You don't give bad things. You come along and you help restore when bad things happen. You give good things. You give good gifts. And so, Father, we look to you today. <coughs> we recognize your goodness. We recognize your mercy. We recognize your love. We pray that you would pick us up in our weariness. Restore us. Even as we worship you and gather together today, restore us. Restore our hearts and restore our souls. Help us to focus on the things that are important and priority, the things that need to be focused on. Forgive us for the times when we, when we pick up on the things that really aren't that important. They may seem important at the time, but in the scheme of things, they really maybe don't matter all that much. Help us to learn to forgive one another and to set aside our grievances and to, to work towards the harmony and the love that you have, have uh, <coughs> desired for us to walk in, especially as the people of God. Draw us towards yourself. Draw us towards one another. Continue to heal what's broken and, and restore the lost. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will be present with us in our own hearts, in our own lives. For everyone within the sound of my voice, may we, may we be filled afresh today with that unction from your spirit that gives us the ability to push forward and carry on. And we pray, Father, that we may experience the power and the fullness of your spirit here in this place as we gather as a, as a congregation of people. And for those that aren't with us in person, that they too, as they listen today, as they watch today, that they will experience everything that your Holy Spirit has for each one of us. Help us.
us to learn to love you. Help us to learn to love one another in the ways that you have reached out to love us. That we can be a reflection of who you are. That we can be a, a channel or a conduit of the grace and the mercy that you've poured out into, into our lives. We say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. As we turn to the scripture today, I just want to remind you that this is a, um, a communion Sunday, and if you didn't pick up a, a little container of, uh, of juice and bread on your way in, um, make sure you flip back and get one of those. And if you're home, uh, take an opportunity to run to the kitchen and uh, find yourself a little morsel of bread or something, a cracker, whatever it happens to be, and uh, a little bit of juice, or if you can't find anything, a little bit of water will do. Prepared um, <coughs> for that celebration of uh, communion that we'll have uh, after a few moments. Our scripture today is taken from Luke chapter 11. We're reading the first 13 verses, and uh, I'm reading from the New International Version today. Many of you will recognize these verses as we read through. There's some familiar parts to it. Uh, the first one being uh, a part of the uh, of the Lord's Prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. And so Jesus said to them, When you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. And my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of a friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door <clears throat> will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or, if he asks, for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? May God grant us wisdom as we apply these portions of his word <clears throat> in our hearts and our lives today. Would somebody mind getting me a glass of water? I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Last week <clears throat> when we met, well, we didn't meet last week, did we? Two weeks ago when we met. Two weeks ago when we met, we started <clears throat> what was to be a two-week um, series of messages on prayer. And so here we are, week three, getting the second half of the uh, two-week series on prayer. And uh, so two weeks ago when we met, we looked at the, at the book of James, where we found their instruction from James on conversation with God, or in other words, prayer, instruction on prayer, how to have conversation with God. Today, 
we're moving forward in that, uh, in that series, if you will. It's just a two-week series, but we're moving forward in that. And, uh, and we come to the book of Luke. Thank you. The book of Luke, where it says to us, where Jesus' disciples said to him, him, teach us to pray. Excuse me a moment. And in the first uh, uh, three or four verses of that uh, passage in Luke chapter 11 that we read, we have um, a version of the Lord's Prayer. Now, this is an abbreviated version. It might not have sound quite right to some of you. That's because it's not the one that we typically use when we recite the Lord's Prayer. That's found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew writes it a little bit more fully, puts a little bit more meat on it. Luke has an abbreviated version which gives us the essence of the Lord's Prayer. And, uh, and the thing to understand about the Lord's Prayer is it's not the prayer that we need to pray. The Lord's Prayer is a, is a pattern for us. It's a template. Jesus was telling his disciples, here's some of the key parts of conversing with God, of conversation with God. Here's some of the things that you need to make sure you include. And we're not going to take a lot of time to unpack this this morning because I want to get to the, to the next section. But just for the sake of, of clarity, there are basically six different things that Jesus highlights for us in the Lord's Prayer that we need to be remembering in our prayer life, in our conversations with God. Uh, the first three have to do with God. First one is honoring God, hallowed be thy name, means to make sure you honor God and recognize who exactly he is. We say, um, our Father who art in heaven, right? Um, well, when we call God our Father, it can almost get a little bit personal because uh, our relationships with our fathers are personal. So, so Jesus says it's not just a matter of our Father, it's, it's our Father, hallowed be thy name. It's our Father, you are to be honored above all others. Our Father, we are to recognize just exactly who you are. And he goes on to say, uh, the second thing is that, is that we recognize that your kingdom is at work amongst us. So we recognize you, we recognize your kingdom is what you are about in our lives, in our world, in which we live. And we're praying, thirdly, for your will to be accomplished in the world and in our lives. So first three things in the Lord's Prayer have to do with, with, with God and our understanding of our relationship with him. He's to be honored. We need to recognize that he's at work building his kingdom. And thirdly, that it's his will that matters, not ours. It's his will that matters. And then he goes on to mention three other things that have a little bit more to do with ourselves. Um, first one having to do with our needs, help us with our needs, our daily bread, and so on. Secondly, forgive us, because we need forgiveness. And, and thirdly, protect us, deliver us from temptation. So those are essentially the six main points that Jesus is trying to promote and help us to understand that these things need to be part of our conversation with God, recognizing who he is on the one side and on the second side, recognizing that we have some needs that we need to turn to him for. So we'll leave it at that. We could, we could spend a lot of time talking about the Lord's Prayer and unpacking all that Jesus is, uh, is, is saying to his disciples there. But as I said, I want, I want to move on and catch the second part of the, of, the, of the text that we're looking at here today. And that is followed up with a parable. The, the, the Lord's Prayer is followed up with a parable, verses 5, 6, 7, and 8, which is almost a humorous parable. It's funny. Uh, Jesus had quite a sense of humor. There's no question about that. And, and I think in this parable, we see a little bit of Jesus' sense of humor. And, uh, and in this parable, the host is uh, simply asking the neighbor 
to fulfill his neighborly duty. The host has a guest who has arrived, and, uh, and it's a guest of the village. Because in Middle Eastern culture, in the way it was, when somebody would come to, to visit, it wasn't just they just go to one house and visit, they would come to the community. They would come to the village to visit. And so Jesus shares this story or this parable to help us to understand some things, and, and he puts this uh, strange, humorous slant on it to help us to realize how unbelievable the story really is. How unbelievable the story really is. The host is asking the sleeper for a loaf of bread because the, na because the guest has come and there's no bread left in his cupboard. And so he goes next door and, and the neighbor says, don't bother me, my door's locked and you'll wake up my kids. Well, how hard is it to unlock the door? And the kids are already awake because, because you've been hammering on my door. It, it's really quite silly. And, and, and the neighbor, you see, would be shamed throughout the community if he didn't go get the loaf of bread and give it to, his, to, his, uh, to the host who was hosting the guest. And, and so the, the whole thing is really pretty bizarre. Refusal to give the next door neighbor a loaf of bread would be absolutely unthinkable, even in the middle of the night. Absolutely unthinkable. And then the neighbor offered the silly excuses about sleeping children who were no longer sleeping. And a locked door, which probably didn't have a lock on it anyway. So here we have the story. The scenario is so unthinkable that it's almost comical. But the point is that the neighbor, the sleeping neighbor, at the very worst would be shamed into helping his friend. Because if he didn't, his name would be mud all over the community, all over town. Because he wouldn't even give him a loaf of bread. The, the Greek word here is best translated, and there's, every translation seems to have a different word for it, but the best translation from Greek is translated into the word shamelessness. Shamelessness. And that's the key in which we need to understand this story that Jesus is sharing with his followers. It's not about the persistent borrower. It's not about the host hammering on the door saying, please, 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 I'm just going to keep asking until I get you out of bed. Please, would you, would you get up and give me the loaf of bread? Please, would you, you know, forget about your, would you, would you just do what I need you to do? That's not what the story is about at all. Persistence pays off sometimes. And persistence isn't always a bad thing. But that's not what Jesus what Jesus is trying to say, if it's true that the shameless neighbor will, will get up and get the bread just even to save his face, then how much more will God meet your needs? If the neighbor is, is going to pull himself out of bed and find a way to put his kids back to sleep and, 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 and open the door and get the bread and give it. If the neighbor, at the very worst it, scenario, is going to go ahead and do that, how much more is God? How much more is God prepared to step into your life and to meet your need? God isn't worried about putting sleeping kids back to bed. God isn't worried about the bolt on the door. God is concerned with meeting your needs. God who loves you wants to grant your requests. Your Heavenly Father desires to answer your prayer. So keep on asking. Keep on asking. Be persistent. Because God, unlike the sleeping neighbor, When I was um, researching this and, and putting some thoughts together, 
uh, I was reminded of a um, of an, a, a, an occasion. Well, I was reminded of a lot of occasions, but but one particular came to my mind when when uh, we were planning on going to uh, to another country on a, on a missions trip, and uh, and we needed money to do it, and uh, we had committed ourselves. There was others that were coming with us, and uh, and uh, but we needed the finances, and time was getting closer and closer and closer, and we got a check in the mail. <laughs> we got a check for $2,500, which was exactly the amount of money that we had been persistently asking God for. And that amount of money came from the most unusual source. It came from a group of people that we didn't even think like this. We were absolutely shocked. They sent us a check with a little letter saying, uh, we just felt like we wanted to send you some money, so we did. And, and that had to have been God. Because I don't think that those people on their own, without God's nudging and prompting, would have done that at all. And you probably have stories. And we got lots more. Because that's the kind of God who loves us and cares about us and is ready to meet the needs and the prayers and the conversations that you and I have with him. Well, the little parable that Jesus gave is followed up with a couple of short poems. And again, these are taken from other places in the scripture where you can read it more fully, but it's just kind of a little capsule. And, and this next little poem talks about asking and seeking and knocking. And we sang a few moments ago that great little, uh, great little chorus of, of seek ye first, the kingdom of God. And, and, and that comes directly from, from this scripture. The asking and the seeking and the knocking are all imperative verbs. Now, I don't know if you know what an imperative verb means, but it, it just simply means that, that it's a request that we keep on making currently. Keep on making the same request. And so in this verse, uh, verse 9 and 10, we're told to ask. We're told to ask for something, anything, but ask for something that God can provide. Something that you're not able to provide yourself. In this case, we're asking God to provide something. Now, only you know what that is for yourself. Maybe it's clothes. Maybe it's food. These days, maybe we're praying for the, the lights to come on. Praying for access to our, our cell phones and our internet again. Those are things that we can ask God for. Sometimes we need to ask God for a, a house, a place to live in. Sometimes we need to ask God for a car, something to get around in. Sometimes we need to ask God for healing because we've got stuff going on in our lives. Or maybe inner healing. Maybe there's, there's scars on the inside that, that we're having trouble getting at and, and, and finding uh, a way forward. Ask God. Ask God for deliverance from struggles that you're having. Ask God for peace. Ask him for hope in the midst of your hopeless circumstances, whatever that may be. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for insight. The list you see goes on and on and on and on. There's millions of things that we can ask God for. But ask him. There's so many things that you and I are not able to do. We're not able to cover ourselves. We are kind of self-sufficient in many ways. But there are way more things that we cannot provide for ourselves that we need to ask God about. So Jesus says, ask, and it shall be given. Then he says, seek, and you shall find. Seek means to, to look for something that's lost, to find what's been lost, to, to go out and search for what's been lost. Now that can be anything from, if you're me, your keys or your glasses, maybe your wallet, things that are important, maybe your telephone, 
not the one that hangs on the wall. Hopefully you don't lose that one. But the one in your pocket, you can lose those pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> there are other things that we need to seek for in our lives. Uh, we mentioned earlier asking about health issues. Maybe we need to seek God and what to do about our health issues. Do we need to see this kind of a doctor or that kind of a doctor or this kind of professional or that kind of a professional? What do we need to do? Seek for what we've lost in, in, terms, of our, in terms of our health. Uh, what about our children? We need to seek God for our children and our grandchildren. And in some cases, our great-grandchildren. In some cases, we need to seek God for our spouse or our brothers and sisters. There are people in our lives that we have lost. We need to seek, seek, seek God for these huge needs that we have, for the things that have been lost, the things that the enemy has stepped into our lives and, and stolen from us and from him. We need to seek God. Seek, and you will be found, and it will be found. We need to seek, maybe, for the fullness of God's Holy Spirit. And we'll talk more about that in a moment, but, but maybe the, the fullness of God's Spirit has, has, has escaped your life, and, and you're running and walking and, and jogging along your Christian life on your own, and you've forgotten about the gift and the power and the accessibility that you have to the Spirit of God to equip you and to enable you and to allow you to do everything that God is calling you to do. Maybe you need to seek the fullness of God's Spirit. But whatever you do, you need to seek, and you need to seek more, and you need to seek some more again in prayer. Seek, and you will find. And the third little imperative verb that's here is knock. And when we knock, typically we're knocking on a door to gain entrance, to be able to, to move into a, a, a different area, to, to gain admission to a closed opportunity. And so we knock on the door, hoping that, that someone on the inside will unlock the door and make it possible for us to, to move into something new to experience something different. In other words, we oftentimes knock looking for favor moving forward. If I come to your home and knock on your door, I'm hoping that I'll be favored with, with an invitation to come in. But there are lots of other doors that we knock on too, lots of other doors that we need to be knocking on. And Jesus is saying, knock in prayer. Knock in prayer to gain access and to gain favor. Maybe it's in a business. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe it has to do with finances. Maybe it has to do with government. There's all kinds of doors that we need to knock on prayerfully. Talking to God about it. Asking him to, to give us favor. You see, what Jesus is saying in these three words, ask, seek, and knock, is, is that the appeals of asking and seeking and knocking to God will work again and again and again and again. They will work. We just have to keep on receiving and keep on finding and keep on having doors opened to us. God is anxious, more anxious to answer our prayers than we are to ask them. Again, all kinds of examples come into my mind, and probably you've got examples in, in your mind, but the one that stands out to me is, uh, is a few years ago, we, took a, um, we borrowed a motorhome from somebody and, and, and went on a little road trip with our kids, and uh, we were on a big highway down in the, in the U.S., and there was... There was uh, it was a big controlled access highway. There are three lanes, probably five or six by now, but three lanes going this way and, and three lanes going this way. Fork in the road. And then we were trying to read the signs, you know, th this is this direction and that's this direction. And, and both were generally going in the same direction. It wasn't like one was going in opposite direction. They were both kind of generally going in the, sa in the same direction. But, but there was a major fork in the road. And, 
and we're scrambling. What are we going to do? Which way should we go? Should we veer to the right or veer to the left? And so we were, our kids were young, and, and we were trying to practice what we preach. And, and we pulled over the side of the road. Busy highway, but nice big shoulder. Pulled over the side of the road. And I said to the kids, we're going to pray. We can see we were within sight of this fork now in the road, and we're going to have to get back on the highway and get over three lanes to go that way or, or go this way. And, and so I said, let's just pray. I, I really don't know which is the best way to go. And so we prayed right there in the, in the, in the van. And, and so we all prayed, and, and uh, we're in the middle of prayer. Probably two or three minutes into it. And no kidding, we heard this loud voice. No word of a lie. Can I help you? Well, we all looked out the windows like, God? <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> and, uh, of course, we didn't see anything. <laughs> and again, can I help you? And uh, so by this time, I looked in the mirror, and I realized that there was a policeman who pulled up behind us, and a and, uh, state trooper, I guess, and he had his megaphone, and that's, that's why this voice was so loud. And, uh, and so he was, he was cautiously, you know, walking up towards the car with his hand on his hip, you know, and ready to, uh, he didn't know what, he, what to expect in this, in this motor home. And, uh, and so I rolled down the window and, and uh, he, he, he said, uh, you know, you're not supposed to be here. And I said, well, uh, we're, we're a little confused. We're not sure whether we should be going this direction or that direction. Said, oh, 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 he said, no problem. He said. The traffic is backed up for miles. If you go that way, there's a, I can't remember, it's an accident or construction, but whatever it was, the, 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 the highway is plugged solid down that way. He said, you want to go that way. But he said, you better get moving because you're not allowed to be here. <laughs> so, okay, we're gone. <laughs> God answered our prayer in a most unusual and dramatic way. But that's the kind of thing that God wants to do for us. It was a great lesson for all of us, but especially for our kids, and, and they remember it well to this day. It was, so, it was so dramatic. But that's what God does. God has an answer for you, and God has an answer for me, and he'll use whoever he wants and however he chooses to communicate that to you. But, but God has answers for your questions. We need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock. All right, it's followed up with a second poem. The last three verses, 11, 12, and 13, where we read a, a, another little story that Jesus gives about appropriate gifts and, and good gifts. And there's two things that come out of this. First, if an earthly father will only give appropriate gifts to his child, how much more will a heavenly father give appropriate gifts to his children? And secondly, if an earthly father will give good gifts to his son, how much more will the heavenly father give good gifts to us, his kids? See, Luke doesn't exactly say or actually say that the father will give, quote, good gifts, but he goes on to illustrate the, the kind or the style of gift that God gives. He illustrates the point with a very powerful illustration. He says... God will even give his Holy Spirit to those who ask. God will even give his Holy Spirit to those who ask. The point is well taken. If the Father will give even his Son, Jesus, and his blessed Holy Spirit, there isn't anything that God will hold back on you. If he's willing to give you his Son and his Spirit, there's nothing that God will hold back. Nothing in the entire world that he wouldn't give you. Of course, as Jesus says almost comically again, unless it's a snake or a scorpion, he's not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. He's got good gifts and appropriate gifts for you and for me. Wow. God is not a miser. God is not like most of us. Hanging on to it, clutching on, well, I don't know, can I, can I get five cents off that? 
That's not our God. He's not a miser. God promises to continually give you and me good gifts. Somebody once said the greatest tragedy is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Did you hear that? The greatest tragedy is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. And there are reasons that you and I fail to offer our prayers. I just thought of a couple here. One of the things that keeps us from praying is pride. And there are so many things that we could look at in terms of pride, but, but basically it's acknowledging in theory God, Jesus, the Bible, but then practically living our lives as though everything depended completely on me. That's what pride is in a nutshell. So I'm not depending on God. I'm depending on me. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to look after this. Because I can. Because I'm a man. I can do it. That's pride. We say, oh yes, Jesus is my Lord. God is my Father. Holy Spirit's living within me. But I'm going to do it myself. That's pride. One of the reasons that we don't offer prayer. Another reason is distractions. We learned a little bit about distractions earlier this week. Distractions come from having too many comforts. Many of us don't have any real physical or, or needs of this world, so we become distracted by the things of the world. Well, this week we lost a lot of those things that we're usually distracted by. We didn't have our televisions, and we didn't have our phones and our computers, and a lot of those things were, were snatched out of our hands for a few days. And what did we find ourselves doing? Well, for many people, we found ourselves doing a little bit more praying. God, would you help me? I need you. I need some help here. You see, distraction keeps us from meeting God and from conversing with God and from, and from offering prayer to God. And third thing would be unbelief. Some people just simply don't believe that when God says he'll answer our prayers, we just don't believe that he will. Maybe we've had an experience where we don't feel that God has answered our prayer, but the problem is that God doesn't always, in fact, usually, God doesn't answer our prayer with the answer that we're looking for. He usually answers our prayer with something else that we're not looking for. But he does answer our prayers. And so unbelief is a third reason that we often don't pray and fail to offer our prayers to God because we don't believe he's going to answer our prayer. James says in his book, you do not have because you do not ask God. Well, this morning the message is entitled, Prayer Changes Everything. And I want to wrap it up by just helping us to understand how prayer does change everything. We are partners with God. We're partners with God. Partners with what, our do with what he is doing, rather. Our job is not to tell God what to do. That's not your responsibility. It's not my responsibility. Our job is to find our part in what God is doing and join forces, partner with him in what he's doing. And that way, God has a part in our activities, and we have a part to play in God's activities. See, Jesus needs to function as our Lord. We call him our Lord and our Savior, but oftentimes we don't allow him to function as our Lord and Savior. Jesus needs to be our functional Lord. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about prayer. Do you remember the story of the... Um, of the general manager meeting with the owner of the company daily. You and I being the general manager and, and God being the owner of the company. And we need to touch base with the owner to find out what's going on. What is the vision? What's the plan? What are your instructions for me about how to walk that out today? Once we understand that we have a major part to play in the answers to prayer that we get, it changes how we pray, because prayer changes everything. And once we begin to understand that, it changes how we pray, and everything about prayer begins to change. No longer do we pray 
God, would you please fix this? And God, would you please do that? And those are pretty common prayers for us. But when we begin to understand that prayer changes everything about our conversation with God and our relationship with God, then we need to begin to understand that there's different questions that, that we need to ask God that are, are better questions and more appropriate questions. Instead of God, would you do this? And God, would you do that? And God, would you help this person? God, would you help that person? God, would you help me? God, would you get my power back on? God, would you help me find my phone? Instead of those kinds of questions, we need to ask better questions like, Lord, what are you doing here? What are you up to? What's your plan here? So that I can come alongside of that. What is your plan? And, and what do you want me to know? And how do you want me to pray? And what do you want me to do? And, and how should I do this? And of course, with these kinds of questions, it requires that we listen to the answers. See the difference? We're saying, God, would you fix this and would you fix that? We're not waiting around for an answer. It's like, well, I'll do my thing, you do yours, and we'll see how it works out. No. We're saying, God, how can I partner with you? How can I be a part of what you are doing? And then we listen to God, and he gives us direction. He gives us instruction. And he gives us answers. We listen to the voice of God. And that's why he gave us his spirit. That's why, as we read a few moments ago, God is even willing to give us his Holy Spirit so that we have this ability to listen to what he's saying. We must walk with him. And we must anticipate what he wants to do. And so that's one of the main reasons that we're going to gather together tonight, and I hope lots of you and more will be able to come. And we're going to gather together, and we're going to have a time of celebrating and prayer together. 7 o'clock, right here, 162 Sherwood Road. We're going to get together, and we're going to pray about our difficulties and our challenges and our troubles. We're going to give thanks for our victories, and we're going to anoint the sick with oil if they would like it. And we're going to confess our sins, and we're going to have confidence that God has good things in store for us as individuals, for us as families, and for us as a church, and for our community. Because God does. He loves us. He's got the best for us. And we're not experiencing the best because we're not partnering with God the way we need to partner with God. So I encourage you, be in conversation with God, partner with God, Ask God questions that allow him the opportunity to give you answers so that you will have your direction, you'll have your instruction, you'll have your marching orders, you'll be able to walk into your day having a much better, much clearer picture of how God wants to use you in the day to come. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to share together in prayer and in understanding that prayer changes everything. Some of us need to change our thinking about prayer so that we can experience these conversations with you in a better and a healthier and a more significant way. So Father, we pray today that your Holy Spirit will help us to apply your word to our lives, that we'll see some of the truths that you are trying to communicate and speak into our circumstances and our situations that will grow in our in our relationship with you and our relationship with one another father we bless you we thank you in jesus name amen i'm going to invite a couple of deacons that are going to meet me at the communion table and we'll have our communion time together as we move towards the end of our not sure about your little cup that you have. If you're here with us in person, you peel off the little purple 
uh, thing on the top and you'll find a little wafer there and then you peel off the next, the next layer and you'll find a little bit of juice. It can be a little tricky the first time if it is your first time. I want to read to you from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. First of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part, I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of the others. One is hungry, another is drunk. <clears throat> what? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I have received from the Lord. That which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after, cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul's saying lots of things there, but one of the things that he's saying is that uh, we just don't come to the table willy-nilly. We, we come here because this is a serious and a holy moment in our lives when we are remembering, when we are remembering the great cost and the price that Jesus paid so that we can do things like we're talking about be in conversation and relationship with Almighty God. Jesus made it all possible when he hung on the cross and, and when he spilled his blood out and when his body was broken for you and for me, he made it all possible. So we give thanks to God and we honor him today. We give thanks for Jesus and we honor him today. And you are welcome to come to this table. We encourage you to confess your sin to God to invite Jesus into your life, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that you can be everything that God is calling you to be. And so as we prepare to take the, uh, the bread, I'm going to ask one of the deacons to lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are, oh, sorry. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that uh, we were able to come uh, to the table of remembrance of what your son our Lord and Savior Jesus has done for us. He died a cruel, cruel death on our behalf. He was, he was scorned. He was uh, spat upon. He, he just, his body was broken beyond recognition. But he, he was faithful. He, he, he followed your direction. He went to that cross and he did what he had to do, which was to give his life up. And uh, he just he did it for, for us. And we are so thankful, Father, that, uh, that your love is so great and so wonderful. And we thank your son, our Lord and Savior, for all he's done for us. And this bread is a representation of the body on that cross that was so badly beaten. And we thank you, Father, that you rose him from the dead and uh, you defeated Satan, hell, and the grave. And now we have eternal life in him who believe in your son. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just invite you to to take that little piece of bread and, or wafer in your hand and just, just break it in two before you get, just break it in two as a, as a symbol of the broken body of Christ. Take eat in remembrance of him. And then we'll pray for the cup. 
Our Father, as we hold this cup in front of us, help us to recognize that the greatest instrument in the church of Jesus Christ was the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are told of in 1 John that cleanses us from all sin. Blood cleansing sin. What a holy plan that you provided for us, for all of humanity, for us to realize that God was going to send a holy man in this world that was going to carry blood that was sinless, blood that would tone and pay for our price, the price of our sins. As many as we have committed, past, present, and future, all of them, Lord, can be covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's for that reason when we go back and look at Jesus Christ dying on that cross and seeing him suffer and empty that holy blood right to the last drop, watching that blood spilt on the ground, shed for us. Help us to appreciate, Lord Jesus, what a fantastic program it was and still is. That when we ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart, he will cleanse us from all sin because of the blood of the Lord Jesus. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This cup is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. going to uh, conclude with the singing of a uh, great hymn of the church, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Stand if you're able and uh, join us as we sing. Thank you for sharing together in this celebration of the love of God, and uh, our prayer is that you will go into this week uh, celebrating and conversing and, uh, and knowing that he is here for you, he is a good God, and he has your back. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the goodness and the mercy and the grace, and for who you are, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Father. You are merciful, and you have watched over us, and you are watching over us, and you will 
watch over us. Go with us this day. Go with us this week. As we move towards next weekend where we uh, celebrate the Canadian Thanksgiving, we pray that you will give us hearts full of gratitude for all of the good things that we are receiving from you. We bless you. We honor you. And we pray that you will continue to care for each one of us, that we will continue to enter into conversation with you. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Excuse me, before you leave, um, I think, are we offline now? We have an in-house announcement.